Hello there, this is Artisan Loom here, and I'm here with another tutorial for my good friend Nix Haley 22. This time we are going to be doing um, her locks that she uses to close up her bracelets. So, this is her Bedazzled Royale, and right here is her lock that she uses instead of a C clip. It just gives it a little more elegance. Um, this is con called the Single Lock because you're only going to cross over once. So um, I'll be showing you how to do this one, as well as the um, shoelace. Let me see if I can find it. Her shoelace um, cuff, or excuse me, um, lock. It's right here. It's... Um, it's got four jump rings on either side and then a shoelace through. So right now I'm going to be showing you this one. And then at the end, I'll come back and show you how to do the single one. But right now we're going to do this one and we're going to do it on a chained uh, border. So um, let me show what you what you're going to need. What you're going to need today are some jump rings. You're going to need eight jump rings. Well, or it just depends on which bracelet that you're going to be doing. I'm doing a nine pin bar uh, King's Armor bracelet. That's what I'm going to be looming up, or uh, not looming up, but um, doing the lock for. And this is the King's Armor that I did in my first tutorial that's on my channel. And um, I'm going to put the lock on it. And so you will need jump rings. This one I have opened already. You'll need a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers, either way. You'll need two beads for the um, tassel part. And then you'll need one bead for the center. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you. I did this one. This is the other King's Armor bracelet um, that, I, that I did. And um, I put the lock on it, and this is the shoestring lock. And so um, these are the two tassels where those beads are going to go, and then that, that bigger one will go in the center there. But um, I did it on this one, and it just gives it a little bit more pizzazz, and um, I really, really love it. It's very simple. And... Um, to tighten or loosen, you just pull on the strings and it comes loose, but yet it stays in place. Okay, so we're going to take this and what you're going to do is you're going to take um, your jump rings. I have eight of them. I'm going to put eight on here, um, but you go ahead and open them up with your pliers. So if they were closed, you would put your pliers through and then open it. And they would open like that just enough to be able to get it through now I'm going to show you on a chained king king armor I just think it it just is more stable when you have um, the chain for it to um, be put through versus bands now if you choose to do bands you can do it um, through the bands you would just have to Come in, either go in through the center of that starburst or come in and, um, well, this side has the cat bands. I think I messed this design up when I made it as far as my copy of it. But you, you would just go through, you know, a bunch of bands, either this, this is probably too much because it's too thick. But you want, you don't want to go through a single band, you want to go through a bunch of bands. So I would say you just put your hook through. Get you about four or five bands on there, however many, about like that. And then you would put um, a jump ring through it. I have a jump ring and I will show you. So you will take a jump ring and you will um, you will just put it through. If I can get a good grip on this, I have, okay. Try to get through all the bands. I may have missed one, but you get what I'm what I'm trying to do but you would um, get it and then that just gives it a little bit more secure fit now if you chose to do it through one band 
which some people do, I don't recommend it. Because see, it just has no give. And then when you go in here and you close up your your um, jump ring as good as you can get it, sometimes the jump ring opening gets put right over the band and then when you go to put your bracelet on, what happens? It goes right through. It stretches out and then it slips through that little jump ring. That's why I recommend doing it on a chain border, but certainly you don't have to as long as you go through four or five bands just to um, so that you have more on the jump ring. It won't fall apart then. Okay, so you're going to go in and um, through the back of the bracelet. And what I've got here is I've got four on each side. So this is the corner one. I'm going to go in and take my jump ring and go put it through the chain. And then I'm going to close it. Just like that. Okay. And I'm going to go through. And I'm going to skip one and do this one. So I'll go in through right here and I'll take it and I will close it if I can get a grip. Okay. And I'm going to skip that one. It's not attached to any, see the cap band, there's no chain attached to um, from this one to this one. So we'll skip this one and we want to do the mirror image on the other side. So we will skip this one and go in through that one, okay? So, I will go in through this one, and this one only, not the bands. Okay, and I will close it. Okay. One more. You're gonna skip this one and go to the end, so it'll be exactly where that one is. Okay, really simple. If I can just, I don't think I, have this open enough to be able to get through my chain so I'm going to open it up just a little bit more okay go through that last one at the corner close it up and just like that okay so now I've got four of them on here okay you want to do the same exact same on, uh, thing on this side, and I've already done it, so I'm going to spare you. You can do the exact same thing you did here, here. You started off in the corner where there was four of them. You started in the corner, skipped one, did one, skipped one, skipped one, did one, skipped one, and then did one. So it's the exact same, you know, to where it's going to lay properly. Okay, so at that point, you can go ahead and finish that. I'm going to let you do that, but um, you need to get your cord ready or whatever you're going to use, and I'm going to go ahead and use um, the leather cord. Okay, and you just get you a big long piece of it. I don't know exactly how much we're going to need. We'll cut it and trim it as we go. Okay. So what you do is you take your cord and you go through the top of that first one and you pull it, okay? You're gonna take the other side and you're gonna go down to the top of that one and pull, okay? And now what you're going to need to do, sorry, is you're going to need to take the, this side and go down through that jump ring just as though you are lacing up shoes. Okay, just like that. And you'll take this other side and do the same thing on this side and just lace it up. Okay, simple enough. Okay, that's what it looks like so far. 
Now I've got to um, take this side or the other side, whichever, whichever way you want to work, and put it down through. Okay, and then take this side and pull it, put it down through. Okay. At this point, we I guess we can just, you know, get it where you want it as far as how tight and not tight you want it. Just like a shoestring, you just kind of lace it up. See that? See how it's laced? Okay, this one's longer than the other, so I'm going to go ahead and, and put a little bit more on this side. Okay, come on. Don't give me a hard time now. Okay, so then they're almost even. Okay, so at that point, you do the, you continue continue this side through okay and then you have this last one and you're going to go down through okay so come on it's got stuck in my jump ring okay so now you're laced up. You might could actually loosen it a little bit. But as you can see, we're laced up. Okay, at this point, you need to get yourself a bead. This one, I put a bead like this. I didn't have another uh, bead that would fit through, so I'm going. I'm hoping this black bead will and white bead will work. You take one end, okay, so not that one. You take one end right here, and you're gonna put it through the bead, okay? And put it on, just like that. Okay, and since you came from this side and, and you slid the bead on like that, you need to go in with this side and you're going to slide it through that way, the opposite way. So you put it through and you need to, this bead needs to be somewhat tight, not super tight that you can't get it through, but it needs to be tight. And I'm going to have to use my pliers because this is the only bead that I'm going to be able to have to be able to use. Oh, let's see if it'll please cooperate please don't give me a hard time and it's going to okay I need to go in through here maybe if I hold it down like this it'll hmm I'm going to snip the edge. Maybe that's what I need to do. Just get a fresh piece to where it's nice and not frayed. I'm going to put it through. And I think it might come up. It's trying to come up through. I got most of it, so at this point I'm going to grab... Let me let me see if I can grab get a grip on it. I think I may got it. Yep. You just need to make sure it's tight but not too tight. Mine's tight because I've got I've got this braid that I've got to try to get through. Okay, so basically you're going to go that way. And this one will go this way. So one's going one way, one's going the other. 
You see that? You went with this cord, you went that way. And then with this side of the cord, you went that way through the bead. So now it's on there. See? Let me see if I can, if you can see it a little bit better. See that? Okay. So now that you have that part done, we need to get our other beads out. And that's going to be where the tassel is. So what we do is we take the end and we've got to put a put it through a bead, a smaller bead. You know, it doesn't doesn't have to be super tight, but it doesn't have to be it needs to be tight enough to where it's not going to slide off. And I'll slide it on, and then I will tie this into a knot. Okay, it's already in way unwinding, but that's okay. I tie it into a knot just like that. Okay, and then the bead just slides down and it stops it from going through. So at that point, I'm just going to cut it off just like that. Okay, so I'll take the other side and do the same thing. Take it, put it through the bead, slide it up a little farther to where I can get a grip, tie it into a knot. Just like so. Okay. Slide the bead down where it can't go through. And then trim it off. Okay. Now you have a lock. So we just need to fix it and get it however, however loose or tight that you want it. Okay. So this looks like it's too tight up here and way loose down here. So I'm just going to, you're just going to fix it as though you had um, shoe strings. How you tighten or loosen the shoe strings. Well, okay. So that's basically what you do. And um, that's what I, well, I'll, I'll show you. This this bead needs to be a little tight, not super tight, but tight enough to where it doesn't slide around, but loose enough to where you can slide it if you pull it. Okay, see that? See how I'm pulling it? It can still slide. So that's what you're looking for. It needs to be tight so it doesn't slide around on it but it will slide if you push it through. Okay? So, you just grab, get this however you want it. Like I just said two seconds ago, I'm repeating myself. Um, but that's what it's going to look like all laced up. And these are your little um, tassels. Now, if you pull on one side, then it'll get longer, tighter, whatever. Um, so you just play around with it. So I kind of want them to be somewhat even. So then I have to make concessions up here. Okay, so there you go. Sorry if I was off camera. I'm looking around the camera to try to see what I'm doing. But that is the lock. And this is what dangles. Now, if you don't like it this loose, meaning this long of a dangle, all you do is you, um, you just trim it. You get it however tight that you think you're going to need it by trying it on. And then um, you can slide this up, tie another knot, and trim it to make these little tassels a little bit shorter. Totally however you want to do it. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get this to where I can get it on to show you how it works. I'm going to loosen it up just a little bit. 
and I'm going to try to put it on. I'm going to put it on. Okay, I'm trying to loosen it so I can get it on without too much bother. Okay, I got it. Not too terribly hard. Got it. Okay, and see how loose it is? It just kind of dangles. That's what this bead is for. So you're going to take this like you would a shoelace, tighten it however you want. And this is another way you're going to know whether um, your tassels are too long. You're going to lace it up once you get it exactly where you want it on your wrist. And don't mind me, but I think I have this, I think I have this um, not centered. It's a little bit further that way. But you get it however you want it and how tight that you, that you would like to have it. And you just pull on, on, on the tassels and that tightens it. See? And now it's tight. But... Apparently, I made these way too long, and that's how you were going to tell whether, um, you know, because you're not going to want, and actually, I probably should have tried it on the other way and had the bead going this way, just, I, I did it this way just because I'm the only one doing it, and I wanted to, um, I have to be able to pull both of them, but, um, you basically do it like that, and at this point, you can tell how long or short you need to make it. But it stays right in place, stays on your, on your wrist, all good to go when you want to. Um, well, at this point, if you see that these are extremely too long, um, then you can do like what I said. Just pull this down, tie it in a knot, however far or up you know, long you want it to be, and then snip it and pull the bead back down. And that's how you'll be able to. But when you want to take it off um, and loosen it, all you do is pull on the bead a little bit, and it loosens it right up, okay? And then you can let me loosen it a little bit more so I can um, take it off. Very simple. But this is goes to show you, I, I love the jump rings um, on the chain because if you did it on the um, on the bands, you wouldn't be able to tug and pull on it as, as, as much. Now, I need to loosen it more, but whatever. I'm just going to uh, try to get it off it. Normally, if I would un... If I'd loosen it a little bit more, it would come off. So, but that is the cuff. I guess I could tighten it up a bit, but that is the cuff um, and the lock for the cuff. It's called a shoestring, shoestring um, lock, and that is for Nix Haley's. Um, nine pin bar design or you could use it on any of them just it's the same concept whether you use one jump ring two four whatever um, but this goes to show you you can just you know pull on these no problem it's not gonna it's not gonna give so um, I buy the thicker jump rings just so that they're not so um, wimpy because that silver one I showed you, or the gold one I showed you a second ago, was real wimpy. I could actually open and close it with my fingers. That's how wimpy it is. But anyhow, that is the two lovely bracelets with the two lovely locks, if I get this right. All right, awesome. Now, we will have to move on to the single... Um, lock which I'm going to show you on my bedazzled royale 
So I'm going to go get what I my supplies that I'm going to need for that, which is going to I'm probably going to use the same exact cord um, that I used for for these. Um, and then I'm going to go get the bracelet, and I'm going to pick out my beads that I'm going to need, or at least, yeah, my beads. I'll need three beads, uh, one for the center, and then two for the tassel. And um, probably you may need a jump ring or two. Um, I'm probably just going to uh, do it with no jump ring. I'll probably do it both ways, that way you can see what um, it is, but that's, it looks like this. The one for the, um, the single, it looks like this. So in this one, I don't even think that she used a jump ring on this one. I think she just took her cord and, and, and put it through the actual chain. So, I guess depending on how close, uh, how much room you had in the back, you know, that you needed to close up, if it was almost all the way closed like this, then I would, I would suggest a single lock. So, okay, I'll be right back with um, my supplies and then we'll get started on that one. Okay, here's the um, lovely, lovely, um, Bedazzled Royale that I did. This is my rendition. And um, basically, I'm going to show you how to do the single closure. And um, what you can either do it with a um, jump ring or not, or without a jump ring. Um, she had explained to me that you could, uh, Nix Haley 22 has explained to me that if you wanted to, you could come in through this starburst. So, depending on what is the back side of your bracelet, which I guess it would be this side is my back side, I believe. Let me see which one's my back side. Well, they're basically the same. So, I'm going to go in through this, um, the little starburst, go up through that, the center of it, see where it all connects. And I'm going to go ahead and grab whatever I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this um, as my um, lock. So I'm going to grab that and put it on my hook and bring it through. If I can do that. It might be another way you could put it on, but that's the way I'm going to do it. Just make it simple because it's not that hard. Once I get part of it through, then I can just pull it. Okay, just like that. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing on the other side, which I guess I'll just pull this all the way through, do the same thing, come up from the bottom, grab this side of the, if it's big enough to be able to fit on your hook, just um, be able to, to pop it through the center of that starburst. Bring it through just like that. So now you have just like this. Okay. And that's what the lock's going to be. So you go ahead and get you a bead that both of these can fit through. Okay. So you're going to take the side. It needs to be a wide enough bead where both of these strands can um can fit through but it you don't want it too loose you want it to be like a snug fit and I haven't let me just see what I can come up with this one this goes through okay just like that now that you pulled it through here you got to take this side and you got to pull it through this side just straight up okay which makes it harder because I have this chain with this little loose um, or the little chain that's in, intertwined in between the black leather. So I'm going to try to put it through the other side. And it's going to be a little difficult just because of these little nubbies. Let's see if I'm able to pull it through. 
you got part of it coming through. Yeah, I got it. I think. Yeah, I got it. So I got it to come through. Okay. So now I've got our lock. You just pull on it to close the lock. Just like that. Okay. So at the bottom here, you are going to take another bead that fits through. Okay. Like I said, again, I've got this where it's coming loose because I cut it. I'm going to try to, if you use a straight cord, it's so much easier, but this is all I got. I only can shop at Walmart, so I kind of limited on my, see, and I got part of it to go through, but not all of it. I'm going to have to hold it real, real good. It's really not hard. It's just, I have the, the junkiest stuff to work with but we're gonna make it work okay I got it to go through I believe if I can grab the end there we go I got it to go through and then I'm gonna just pull it up like this okay and I'm gonna tie a knot at the bottom okay make a knot did I get it I think I'm missing I think I need to pull, see where that chain's dangling. That's only because it's mine that I'm using. If you had the correct, well, if you had the correct uh, cord or whatever that you had, it wouldn't be this difficult. Okay, so now I pulled it through. And I'm going to try to put it as close to the bottom of that as possible. Just tie it into a knot. And I'm going to use one of my tools to kind of help me because of this little beaded chain part. I'm going to make sure I get a good, a good tight knot. Okay, I've got a knot there. And then you take this and you pull it down and it can't go anywhere. See, it's, it's there. And then when you get to the bottom, you're just going to snip the itch okay now you're going to do the same with this one grab your bead put your bead through just like that that would be my poor dog thunder going nuts again so i will be right back sorry about that so you pull it all the way up tie a knot and actually and it all depends on your wrist size as to how long you want these um, tassels to be. I, I used a piece that I had cut off earlier. Oops, and I didn't get that right. One of these was left out. Um, but I used a piece of this um, leather, suede leather cording with these beads. See how it's doing now? Now it's not going to cooperate with me. Okay. And uh, it was already this size, so um, you can start off with a, a lot bigger and then um, trim it down to the size that you need. That's normally what I do, just so that it doesn't make it so hard to figure out. It's to be hard to make the knot, and the only reason why is because of this little chain thing. It's driving me nuts. I won't buy this again. But since it's all I have to work with, I'm going to make it work till it's all gone. Okay, now I've got it to go through. I'm going to pull it to make it nice and tight. Okay, so it should be nice and tight by now. Okay, so then you take the end, pull it down, and now it can't go past the knot. And then you trim it with scissors. Okay, so there you go. There you have your lock. Hold on, let me straighten it up a little bit. There's your lovely lock. Okay, so in order to put it on, let me see if I can move some of this out the way. You just, and remember that this needs to be a little tight. Um, it, it, you don't want it to be able to slide too much, but um, enough to where you can... Um, move it around but you don't want it to be so loose that it just slides because it's got to be able to hold 
I'm just going to pull this through to make it even. It's got to be able to hold it, you know, um, in place to where it doesn't come loose. So I'm going to put it on, which I'm going to have to, I guess, do it this way. I'll have both my hands. Pull it tight. as tight as you want it and then there you go there you have your lock okay so if you want these shorter that's fine but you don't want to go too short because you've got to end up loosening it to get it off so there it is and you want to loosen it you just pull on it side to side which I think what's happening is these little metal beads are getting stuck as to why but you just pull on it loosen it up and take it off okay but that is the single lock if you choose to do it through the hole right there if you did not chain it which I guess it doesn't matter whether you chained it or not you can still put it through now I leave the c-clip on here for just stability purposes you can't really see it but um, if you choose and you don't have it um, and you have it chained, you can put a, let me see if I can find one, a, um, a jump ring if you choose. You can, um, you can take it through, put a jump ring on and then put it, but it's, it, it's just more stable if you go through a bunch of bands. That's why I say this, this is probably the better, you know, if you, if you don't have a little um, starburst to be able to pop it through, you can just go through, you know, a stack of bands and do it this way. This is probably the most comfortable, easiest way. Um, but you can do like we did in the um, King's Armor and put the jump rings through several bands if you didn't chain it. And then, you know, the thicker jump rings. Um, but put it through either the chain or through several bands to um, get it to um, be tighter. But that's another way that you could do it with the jump rings. And then once you do either one or two jump rings here, then you do it the same way. You, you can just attach this through the single one, through the jump rings, um, and do it just like this. But since we have this, I think it'll suffice. But that's basically what you do. With this one just make sure that this isn't this is actually sliding around a little too easily see because when you pull on it it comes loose so you want it to be a little more snug okay like this one is pretty snug but it's not too snug that you can't move it okay it just holds it in place but that's basically how you do it if you choose to do it through the starburst or through a bunch of bands and then put your um, your cord through it and then pull it through the beads or you can use a jump ring like we did on the king's armor put it through a bunch of bands or through the chain on either side and then put the cord through those and then finish it up the exact same way we did here but this seems to be the easiest way I plan on making an order for some um, different beads uh, with this type of cording that I have it's hard for me to find one that's either tight enough or you know I've got to find the right size for it although I'm not probably not going to buy this one anymore use regular uh, cord but um, that's exactly how you do it so this is the single lock and this one is the shoelace lock and these are a concept by Nix Haley 22 and it just brings your bracelets to a whole nother level remember that you can you do it on any bracelet and um yeah that's it that's how you do the lock so I challenge you to to take your large creations and go the extra step to put the lock on and you won't be disappointed in that and um, if there's any other locks that she has I will do another tutorial for it but for now we are just going to do the single and the shoelace um, I think she has one more um, but we're gonna start off with this and keep it simple so 
I hope you enjoy. And if you would like to give her a follow, she's NixHaley22 on Instagram. And I'm Artisan Loom um, on Instagram. And if you could subscribe to my channel, that would be great. And um, I really appreciate you guys watching. So enjoy. Have fun with it. Bye.